Hello, this is a quick look at Sprinter in action. Um, Sprinter is the next iteration of KRunner from um, Plasma Desktop 4.x. Uh, this is the test UI, it's not the actual UI you would see in a desktop shell, but it's what I've been using to actually test the system um, interactively anyways. So the main goal behind Sprinter was to create a system that was faster and which uh, um, produced more reliable results um, than KRunner and left the UI to be fluid 100% of the time. So I'll just walk you through uh, the UI here and um, which really kind of um, shows everything that's going on um, in the guts of the, the belly of the beast, if you will. So there's two tables here. Um, they're both just showing models that are provided by the library, the Sprinter library itself. Um, and this makes it really easy because it's model view based. It makes it really easy to use from QML. So for instance, here is QML to use the uh, Sprinter library um, with a search field that causes queries to be done and then to display them really, really, really small, very simple, very QML-y. The, uh, the QWidget based UI that you just saw is a little more involved um, because it also shows the runners um, on the left, but as you can see, it's also very small and pretty much fully functional. This UI creates a runner manager, which in behind the scenes creates a thread in which all the work gets done. So finding the plugins is done in another thread, um, or in the worker thread actually. Uh, when queries are requested, they're run in multiple threads. And we'll see how the, all that works in a second. So first of all, here are the runners that it's found. There's three that I have in the test system, um, a test runner, a date and time runner, which allows you to type things in like, well, date, time, time zones, etc. There's also a YouTube runner that allows you to find videos from YouTube. So this kind of exercises different aspects of the of the system. Uh, it has the usual you know, name, the identifying plugin ID for configuration purposes, uh, description to show the user, but then loaded and busy. So as you can see, none of them are loaded right now. Um, and you have to request loading. And in the test UI, you just double click on one and it loads. The loading is also done in a separate, um, in, in the worker thread. So the UI is not blocked by even loading the plugin. So the plugin takes a while to load, no problem, your UI remains fluid. Um, and I'll demonstrate this is actually the case in a minute. So we'll load them all here. And when you type, something in, such as say Video KDE, you'll see results come up. Now what's different between Sprinter and KRunner is when something is returning um, asynchronous results as the YouTube runner is for this, um, the runner itself doesn't have to manage the asynchronous bookkeeping itself. So when a query um, session starts, the runner plugin is asked to create a session data. If it doesn't create one, it gets a default one um, created for it. Um, if it doesn't want to be included in the session, it can return a null pointer. Um, so for instance, if it relies on an external application running, it can just return null for its session data object and it won't be run at all. The, there's also another uh, method that it can do this at runtime if it wishes, but I won't get into those details in this video anyways. So the session object is used by the runner to do things like asynchronous matching. So when a match occurs, we'll take a real quick look at the, the code for this. When a match starts, it's run in a, uh, a separate thread from the worker thread even, and there's multiple matches being run simultaneously. And it can basically decide whether or not it should match. And in this case, it's saying, yeah, I should, because it starts with video. So I'm gonna ask a query to be created or started. And so its session data object actually starts the query. So the match thread is done. It's gone. It's away. Um, the session object still exists and will actually run the network request to YouTube and even parse the data. This also happens um, in a thread separate from the UI. So asynchronous handling is very simple. And cleanup is also simple. When the session is over, the session data object is destroyed 
and you can do your cleanup right there. The busy token you see here is kind of neat as well. Whenever a match is run, um, a busy object is created on the runner. Um, and in this case, because we are doing asynchronous, we also create one in the session data whenever we start a query. Whenever there is a active busy or whenever a busy object exists for that runner, the runner is marked as being well busy. This allows the same runner to be um, used from multiple threads, um, running multiple asynchronous queries, whatever that's going on, and all the bookkeeping for whether it's busy or not is handled for it. You just create and destroy um, busy objects as you go. This is the um, very familiar RAII resource acquisition is initialization pattern in action. So asynchronous is really quite simple. Um, you can see when it's busy, which is nice because that means in the UI we can actually show if um, and even which, if we wish, uh, plugins are actually trying to return results still. So if you also notice here with these returns, there's only 10 of them, and that's because uh, paging is implemented. So the runner knows how many results it is expected to return, in this case 10, and the offset. So if we want to get the next 10, we could do another request with the same query, and YouTube would then, the YouTube plugin would then uh, return you know, 11 through 20, um, in addition to 0 through 10, which is cool. So the matches also provide a lot more information about themselves, the type, so these are all videos, where they're from, from network service, um, and the precision. So in KRunner we had this 0 to 1.0 um, relevancy ranking, and it really didn't get used. So I'm trying something a little more coarse-grained coarse and simplified. Uh, behind the scenes, these are all, of course, enumerations, integers, there's not string matching going on, it's just for when you actually view it in a Q widget table, it automatically, for you magically, transmutes them into strings. So uh, the from allows us to let the user know um, what is uh, where these matches are coming from, group them accordingly, um, even say we don't have network so don't bother running um, the matches that require network. Uh, the type, there's a couple dozen types right now um, ranging from you know desktop application, installable, book, document, um, network location, um, geolocation, uh, etc. And this will this allows the UI to filter by the by the type, sort by the type, um, display them differently. So it might display a geolocation on a little map versus a you know DVD style cover for a video. So it, 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 this gives a lot more information about the matches, which is all kind of was kind of muddled together in in KRunner. Um, there's also user data and data. Data is used internally, and the user data is used for doing things like putting it on your clipboard um, automatically. And finally, there is, and these were also um, together in KRunner and, and made things a little awkward at times. And then finally, there's search term. Um, none of these are search terms. These are all executable. So if I actually double click on this, it will open up a web browser and take me to the YouTube video. But if I was to type in, Plasma. Um, the test runner is actually going to return a match, which is an exact match. Um, and it says it is a search term. And the data is time. And this you wouldn't see the data in the real UI. Now, if I run this by double clicking on it in this case, um, it's going to search now for time. This allows drill down um, searches. So an application runner, as you can see, we just double clicked on it and we got the local time. Um, the a application runner may choose to show all the categories of applications, you know, games and productivity and you know editors and whatever other categories there are, um, which would then be searchables. And when the when the user would select games, it would then research on game and return all of the game applications. There's another neat thing here that's going on. So the date and time guy just returned the date and time. And as you can see, the time is updating. So this is also an, um, thanks to having the session object, which is long lived, even though the match is over. And um, as long as this query is there, it will continue to update the time. And this single um, entry, if there was, you know, 100 different um, matches, um, just this one would be updated um, with the current time, which is pretty neat. So that's another improvement over over K runner. Um, 
Yeah, so the amount of code that's in is actually pretty reasonable. There's uh, about 500 less co less lines of code in the libraries compar co compared to KRunner, although there are features left to be implemented, so I expect that to disappear. Um, the three runners that do worldwide date and time finding by time zone and city, um, the YouTube runner and the sample come out to 465 lines, so not too bad. Um, the actual test app is 44 lines for the Q widget and 27 lines for the QML version, so very compact. Now I want to show that indeed um, there is no um, blocking. So what I'm going to do is in the method that actually loads the uh, plugin uh, metadata, I'm going to put a sleep in there and when a runner is actually loaded I'm also going to put a sleep of three seconds in. This will be really visible. So let's rebuild the application and run it with this. And what we'll see is there's no runners here, but the UI is fluid. Let's do that again. I can actually come in, uh, come in here and type away, and then they appear. And the work thread was actually blocked sleeping. It was, you know, for all intents and purposes, deadlocked. This emulates what might happen if a if a yet tons of plugins on the system or um, one plugin for whatever reason took a long time to load. Um, the UI doesn't block. Even if you go to load a plugin, you can still type things. Now, now it's loaded um, and it also returned the match. As soon as that plugin was loaded, it knew that that plugin had not been matched against the current query and ran the query. So the UI remains fluid 100% of the time, which is one of the big goals. Um, there's still quite a bit to do on Sprinter. Um, it's in my personal Scratch repository on git.kd.org. We'll eventually move to Playground and who knows from there uh, to where from there in the long run. But I thought I'd show uh, where I'm at right now. Cheers.